the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Propaganda. Government is the problem. Martial law in America. A new world order. Right now. The new world order. The acquisition of unwarranted influence. The new world order is emerging. Build a new world order. The military industrial complex. They're just as powerful, just as strong. Revolution! Yeah. No sheep to the media, the TV's on lock. Vaccines tainted, they modifying the crops. Slipping poison in the drinking water for a slow slaughter. Approving the sterilization for your granddaughter. Population control in effect on the low GMO. Serving a different purpose than you all know. There will never be a cure for cancer within arm's reach. Attention is key for the trillion dollar industry. And they'll be damned if you're messing with it. Buying anybody up who stands in the way you pay them the mess of winning. Can't wrestle with the big boys in the summit. I stand to run from it. Gain knowledge in the buttons. The economy collapse was in fact an attack. Strategically crashed and snatched the mask with a power grab. Financial demolition got everyone on the system. It's got you playing the game and you ain't even know you win. Go ahead, drink up. Go ahead, drink up. While I get my thing going, go and grab that big cup. And fill it with Kool-Aid. Fill it with Kool-Aid. Drinking that Kool-Aid. You drinking yeah, that Kool-Aid. Yeah. They say peace for this sheep, pal. Power to the people. Me love this country. Why the hell? to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, May 30th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube is ddarko2012 and 2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So, um, this first article I have up is from RT, Bilderberg Power Masters Meet in the United States. And, uh, of course, the InfoWars, they're just covering that, like, really extensively, so I don't really need to go into it. And to be honest with you, I just... I already know about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's like the, everything else, like the protests. It's just, I guess you can bring pro, uh, uh, attention to it, but I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, you're just gonna sit out there and annoy the the people that work there. But you know, most of us do understand that, you know, Pepsi, Cola, IBM, all these companies, Goldman Sachs, they're all meeting together um, periodically behind closed doors in private, uh, kind of like the G8 was. And uh, they're deciding, you know, uh, countries' futures. So it says here, every time a Bilderberg meeting takes place, important things happen. The last time they met in the United States was an election year in 2008, and the world got Obama. This year, they're back in the United States. Uh, will they decide who the next president will be? But also, yeah, in 2008, the housing crisis, and that's what they were engineering and cooking up as well. So... On June 5th of that year, Barack and Hillary mysteriously disappeared for some hours somewhere in the D.C. area. Their agendas blocked out, and they clearly sneaked off to meet the Bilderbergers. But to be honest, you know, there, there is some real uh, business that goes on here. Unlike the G8, uh, which basically, from what I read, they didn't really accomplish anything. I'm not really sure if they were supposed to be accomplishing anything that was good or positive for, uh, for the people they, quote, represent. But either way, it says Obama pushes growth and stability. No, it means he's pushing more debt at the G8 summit. Then we have Euro falls amid fears of Spain possible bailout. It uh, slumped to a two-year low versus the U.S. dollar. It says here Spain may be forced into asking, uh, uh, could be forced into asking for a bailout of its ailing bank. So that's how it works. You're forced into asking. <laughs> 
So Bank of England readies plan for euro collapse. I covered this on Monday. The Bank of England is poised to cut interest rates or launch another round of quantitative easing if the euro collapses. It has emerged. So it says here that the bank has already completed some quantitative easing program, effectively printing more money worth 325 billion pounds. And it goes on and says this extends from asking banks to ensure their position in Greece to considering new border controls to prevent a wave of immigration from the European economies. Then we have Barroso saying he sees political momentum for more integration. So he goes on and he says that uh, this is going to push for an early plan for further integration in the Eurozone, claiming political momentum on his side. And basically what he's calling for is um, a banking union to help share the debt burden. So pre-collapse ramp up, retailers stock up on shutters, organize security details ahead of financial meltdown with uh, hundreds of billions spent to save the uh, economy of Greece and the rest of the continent. Unemployment rates have been in excess of 50% among those in their 20s any solution now we're nowhere to be found many of Europe's uh, countries and around the world are realizing that this entire system is about to come unhinged when it does they're going to be ready so for riots on the streets it says retail businesses uh, in Greece and greater Europe are now planning for the worst and it goes on here and says that they're planning this uh, company Dixon this is from Reuters uh, says that the company uh, bosses around Europe agree as a financial crisis in Greece worsens. Companies are getting ready for everything from social unrest to complete meltdown of the financial system. So the preparations include sweeping cash out of uh, yeah sweeping cash out of Greece every night. Sorry, uh, cutting debts, uh, weeding out badly paying customers, and readying for a switch to the new uh, Greek currency if the country is forced to abandon the euro. So it says here, Dixon's has ordered enough shutters to protect its stores and is uh, working with Greek police and security groups. I'm sure you remember this from Monday, this article. Police tell Greeks not to withdraw money from banks. Police are urging Greeks to keep their money in bank accounts rather than putting it at risk of theft, the Guardian reports. And remember this, uh, uh, Lagarde of the IMF saying, telling the Greeks to pay their taxes. Well, it says here that... Um, the IMF boss, who caused international outrage when she suggested that the Greeks should pay their taxes, earns a tax-free salary. Then we have the mass migration of the super-rich. says here the global rich are on the move, whether it's wealthy French or Americans fleeing from prospect of higher taxes or wealthy Russians, Chinese trying to escape political uncertainty. Millionaires and billionaires around the world are migrating like never before, according to government statistics and relocation experts. There's a suddenly, or there's a sudden awakening among the wealthy that they're no longer bound to a certain country. Well, we're globalized, <laughs> and they know that. And also, you, you know, they understand that uh, certain countries are going to be changing drastically in the near future here. Uh, even borders and stuff like that. So that's why they're moving around. That's why I have people like Bachman. I'm not saying she's super rich, but people, you know, changing uh, citizenship and stuff like that. Yeah, the number of Americans seeking to renounce their citizenship surged to more than 1,700 last year, more than twice the rate in 2009. Yeah, so here we go. The wealthy are eyeing Switzerland, Britain, and Singapore as possible escapes from uh, France. Some of the rich in France are also seeking to leave what they perceive as a growing hostility towards the rich in their country. While those uh, rich in China and Russia and Brazil are going to Britain and the United States in record numbers. Then we have Rothschilds buy into Rockefeller wealth business, two of the most, gl oh, the most glamorous names. That's glamorous, right? When you're um, doing what you're doing there, uh, it's, it's a glamorous thing, right? It says here in the name, uh, names in global finance are linking up with the Rothschild banking dynasty agreeing to buy a stake in the Rockefeller Group's wealth and asset management business to get a long sought foothold in the United States. Hmm. Yeah, they're buying 37% from the French group Society Generale. Uh, this is funny. It goes on here says that, uh, that Rothschilds has helped uh, finance Britain's war against Napoleon in the 19th century and raising funds for the loan allowing the British government to buy the Suez Canal. If I remember correctly, um, you know, helping to finance the Britain's war against Napoleon in the 19th century. I'm sure some of you know what I'm going to say here. Um, but wasn't it that uh, he was responsible for disseminating um, disinformation that England had lost? And everybody just kind of said, oh, uh -uh, whatever. And the markets went down and he just bought everything up on the cheap. So he actually made out. See, that's what's so glamorous about these people. They take over entire effing countries.
Shell is the first major to exit oil blocks in post-war Libya. Royal Dutch Shell Monday became the first major uh, gas company to exit the oil and gas exploration blocks in the post-war Libya amid concerns over insecurity and in contracts. So the Anglo-Dutch giant, that's Royal Dutch Shell basically, the Queens and that, uh, insisted it was all still interested in the country which holds Africa's largest oil reserves. So it's kind of funny, right? They're going on, they're going on, they're actually complaining about how good of a deal they had when they had Gaddafi there. As we were talking about elections, just some quick election news. Mass illegal immigration, voter fraud in Florida, and the feds don't care. So it goes on and says that um, last month, a Florida election officials were denied help by the feds to confirm citizenship status for 180,000 legal immigrants already registered to vote. It says uh, in just one swing state, an election that's going to be boiled down to, it says that's a few thousand votes. It's pretty important. Uh, it says here, workers shot outside South Texas polling location. He was struck in the leg. I don't think he was killed. And then we have this. Uh, in Iraq, they whip shoes at you, but in Canada, they send uh, feet to their representatives. Human foot mail to Canada's conservative party, or neoconservative party should, is what it should be called. And then back to uh, Florida, it says here a Florida panhandle mayor has died after an apparent exposure to mold while investigating a resident's complaint. And uh, the last couple of articles I have in politics, U.S. Tea Party fans to boycott presidential election report, so says report. And it goes on here, says that they reportedly said that its supporters will not cast their ballots in the November presidential vote in a bid to protest the election process in their country. Well, hopefully it doesn't get like the U.K. or England where you're actually required to register to vote. I'm not sure if you have to have to vote, but uh, yeah, it's getting that bad. So yeah, you know, it's like with Ron Paul, though, they actually said that he had quit his uh, campaign. It's like, no, he just doesn't have any money, so he's uh, for the primaries anymore, and he's just gonna hold off until the general election. But they said that he was quit, he quit it, and he, and he was out. And then you have Obama in the news today saying, oh, well, he's congratulating Mitt Romney on clinching their nomination, right? So, I mean, just pure bullshit, again. Mitt's uh, dilemma, Memorial Day speech, claims two paths forward. It goes on and says, he said, insisting that the U.S. has two paths forward, Romney presented the dilemma between the pathway to Europe, nothing uh, how much smaller European militaries are than in the early 20th century, and how that, that that had made them less influential to shrink our military smaller to pay for our social needs. So he made it clear he prefers the other option in which the U.S. keeps a massive military industrial complex that is way bigger than any other power on the planet and urge action against Syria. Speaking of politicians and military industrial complex, Republican governor wants drones policing Virginia. He told a radio station it's great and there's no reason that drones should not be available to law enforcement in the United States. I think we ought to be using technology to make law enforcement more productive. So it cuts down the manpower. See, it's more efficient for this bad economy. And he goes on there basically says how important privacy is. So uh, rebuild your economy with the drone industry. They're talking about Ohio and, and how the drone industry has an enduring relationship with the state. That's right. Ohio, I think, was the birth of aviation. So it says here, U.S. reportedly plans to arm Italy's drones. Just recently, I don't know if you remember we reporting on this, there was actually troops being deployed, not you know deployed, but they were inside Italy. They were going to actually put uh, troops on the streets uh, due to the anarchist federation that's threatening the Olympics now. So, but you have to remember that the U, you know, the U.K. and the United States are all under the umbrella of the Vatican, so they have to protect their assets. Um, moving on here, we have watching dissidents is a booming business in China. So co-workers, neighbors, government office workers, unemployed, young toughs, and gang members are being used to monitor perceived troublemakers. Those are activists, according to the rights group. Then remember this, Israel is spying in and on the United States. This, of course, is old urban Israeli-based company that generates computerized records and billing data for nearly every phone call made in America. So, you know, basically China's not the only one outsourcing their spying. Israel hints at it may be behind the flame super virus targeting Iran, while South Korea teens flock online snitch pro no, uh, North Post. That's right. They're going to scrub the internet of North Korea sympathizers. Remember, I just covered this. Korean surveillance school trained citizen snoops. That's South Korea. New big brother of cyber weapons can turn on your computer's microphone, take screenshots, and copy and record communications. Now, remember this. Face reading software to judge the mood of the masses as TSA's program to read flyers' expressions comes under fire. We have hundreds of words to avoid using online if you don't want the government spying on you. You can check them out. But don't worry, they're not looking for signs of just general dissent. 
This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.